You are not gonna believe these patch notes. Based off of what I've seen so far, these are the greatest patch notes of all time. It's honestly confusing how fulfilling and satisfying it is to read these patch notes because these developers probably play their own game and listen to feedback. It's actually, it's actually insane. And then they find elegant solutions to different things. Okay, so we're gonna go over the most important parts here. So there's the Falconer, there's the Warlock overview, the item faction overview. Most of this stuff we already knew already. There's a couple interesting like UI and usability tidbits here and there. There's the Gathering Storm skill, the new Tempest Strike rework, the Healing Hand skill tree, all fantastic. They showed us the resonances. So there's like the obsidian and the golden resonance. The obsidian one is super expensive and the golden one's just expensive. They said in a video that these are valuable resources, so don't use them willy nilly. And then they talk about cycles a little bit. They recommend everyone play cycles because new characters will all eventually end up in the legacy area for like where all pre-existing characters and items will be forevermore. And so that you can participate in like leaderboards, stuff like that, and trade and party with other cycle characters. There's a full offline mode now that you can launch directly from Steam. That's amazing, love offline mode. So you can just play it on the go. The visual upgrades, they call it the scene variant system. Basically they're adding like five to 10 new tile sets for every pre-existing tile set based off of like the point in the last epoch timeline that they that the system chooses you can see there like it looks amazing like and they're also adding more echo tile sets as well so like eight new ones on top of like five to ten new visually refreshing ideas it's insane you're never you're never going to get tired while you're playing this game it's always going to look different the new lighting system looks incredible like they're like dynamic oh it just looks so good it just looks so good and then other various oh and they're adding cinematics so if you're into story the cinematics are there too like pfft. look eight other cinematics added throughout the campaign chapters wow 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 okay so it's going to look different while you're playing through the game even if you're a veteran player Updated all character classes, model improvements, better proportions, new rigs, new animations, continued improvement, performance of our visuals, optimizing texts, optimizing textures, draw calls, model cleanups, shaders, lighting, terrain shader improvements to make environments more lifelike and visually cleaner. It's just nuts. Look how beautiful, look how beautiful these are. Oh my, it's just like such a cool art style. Okay, okay, moving on. Endgame rebalance. This is the part where I just, this is the satisfying part where it's just, holy shit. Okay, what all these words say is, enemy and health globally above level 60 has increased by around 5% at level 80 and 25% at level 100. Now this is because they changed the way that corruption scales in the end game. So things are gonna be slightly higher base strength and then corruption is gonna scale up more quickly and it's also gonna be more densely scaled. So what this means is that for the arena and for dungeons, enemies will have a baseline higher difficulty, but they also scale back the enemy modifiers throughout all the endgame systems in order to make it only slightly more difficult. In this line specifically, because we have buffed enemies globally overall, we expect it, that there will be more difficult at a baseline. And that stays true for dungeons as well, but they constantly fine tune all these things. So if it's too difficult, don't, don't, don't switch it back. Same thing that they're thinking about doing for corruption, they're gonna do with the endless arena. So they're gonna make it scale up more quickly. So you, you spend less time doing the infinite scaling mechanics. Wave 40 is equivalent to the old wave 200. So that saves you 60 waves just right there. And 320 is equivalent to old 500. Basically the entirety of the campaign is gonna feel different. They're they're changing enemy positions, enemy types, enemy models, taking out old ones, putting in new ones. Here's one thing that everyone will love. Larger Imperial enemies such as Immortal Eyes and Desecrated Fleshes are now always rare. Those are those big tanky boys, the Immortal Eyes, they blow themselves up like and Desecrated Fleshes have the big rocks that they slam into the ground. Now, this is such an important change because in Echoes, if you got an Echo that had Immortal Eyes and Desecrated Fleshes in them, there's just too many of them. For most builds, like you're just gonna have a hard time now because of the way that like rare enemies um, spawn within areas, there are gonna be way less of them. And also any skill that procs off of rare enemies 
you'll you'll be good to go. All right, dungeons. The T1 dungeons, way, way easier. Way, way easier, even with the base changes to enemies in general, because T1 dungeons are typically below level 80 or so, so you won't really feel any changes there. Basically, dungeons give a ton more XP in more ways than one, and you're gonna have a fantastic time in these, and they're gonna feel really nice. And you can see here T3 and T4 dungeon mods have been adjusted so that bosses at those tiers have a similar power to before. However, this means that earlier parts of the dungeon will be more difficult, especially for Soulfire Bastion. Something to keep in mind. So basically you're gonna be able to get higher corruption more quickly and you're gonna be more rewarded for doing higher corruptions at a higher pace than was previously existing in the game. It's amazing. Monolith mob density was rebalanced. As far as my own bias and anecdotal evidence is concerned, this basically makes all timelines equal, generally equal in terms of XP gained. And so it doesn't really matter which timeline you're doing. Before you really wanted to do like just a few timelines, but now it doesn't really matter. So you can do whatever you want and get the same amount of rewards effectively. Also, there's gonna be more enemies quantity, not like ver variety wise. It used to be at the far end and enemy modifiers stayed for six echoes. And now it's to a maximum of three. So this, this change makes it so that you're really gonna wanna stack up corruption. But getting that corruption is faster and easier, remember because of the changes they made earlier in the notes. So basically there's gonna be a smaller variance of difficulty that you're gonna be able to raise up by like intentionally. Whereas before there was a wide variance of difficulty that you raised up and then like <laughs> inconsistently, you know, it, it's, it's really nuanced what this does, what those two changes do to each other. Okay. And then also they did some rebalancing on the mods as well. Basically everything works in your favor. Other changes. Now this, I don't know why they put this as other changes. This doesn't make any sense. These should be main changes. This one, this one sentence right here, it's not even a sentence. This one bullet point right here, disabled bonus XP from Monolith for characters below level 50. Now, now for context, this changes the race to level 100 dramatically. Why is that a quick summary of the way that the experience gain in Last Epoch works is that you gain bonus XP per level an enemy is above you that you kill up to 10 levels above you. And any level above that you doesn't count. So you can be killing level 100 things at level five and it'll only give you XP as though you're killing level 15 enemies. Now racing in Last Epoch, you essentially reach a certain point where your character is able to go do monoliths because you don't actually have to complete the campaign in order to start the end game. So for blade dancers, they typically enter monoliths at around like level 25 or so. Absolutely ridiculous because they're level 58 areas that they're entering. But anyways, now they'll only get XP as if they were fighting level 25 monsters instead of level 35 monsters. And that is huge. So if you wanna level up as quickly as possible, you're actually gonna to get to level 50 before you do your first monolith echo, essentially. In itself is like, what the f That is so, that's, it's very crazy, the change that this one bullet point makes. And it's just in the other changes area. Basically, if you wanna to get to level 100, you're gonna to have to rethink most of your strategy in the early game in order to get there as quickly as possible. Here's the new tile sets that we talked about before. There are two ruin themes, three divine themed, and three imperial themed echoes to add in alongside all the other echoes they already had. And then on top of the scene variant system, all this together, the visual variety in this game is gonna be the greatest of any ARPG, hands down, it's insane. Now here is another gigantic change. So, so for context, Anytime you completed a timeline before, you got to choose which way you went. So basically, you got to choose one of two ways, uh, for most timelines anyway. So you can go up or left or up or left, whatever. Now you get both up and left. The end game systems, basically, they just got smoothed out and rebalanced in a way that is favorable to us, the players, which I can't think, I just, who, who thinks about their players anymore? The f that's that's crazy. So now we can have 25 online characters instead of 20. 
Um, that's five times more characters we can have than stash tabs given to us in Diablo 4. I don't know how they do it, man. They keep doing it. All right, they added a whole new mechanic into the game called parry. Now, parry is essentially a dodge that makes those hits still count as hits for the purpose of debuffs and damage over time. Uh, the, they don't have that many sources of them in the game, so it's impossible to currently reach the cap of 75% parry chance, but this seems really, really cool. Excited for that. Stun avoidance rework. Now your base stun avoidance scales up with you over time and they change the way that it scales and how useful stun avoidance as a stat is now. And they also added a new source of health into the game with the hybrid health and stun avoidance affix. So a top tier amulet for tanking is probably gonna have flat health and hybrid health stun avoidance app uh, suffixes on it, which is kind of crazy to think about. Yeah, it gives, a, it gives a lot of health. It says 20% less health than a health suffix modifier at higher tier values, but that's like, that's totally fine. Now, I'm not gonna go over all the changes to all the classes and all the items and even changing a lot of the nuances of unique items and like so many different, like too many changes to, go read these patch notes. Go read them. You will be actually shocked by how, just how beautiful and elegant a lot of these changes are. Go read these patch notes. They're on Last Epoch forums. God damn. I'm so hyped for release. Oh my God. Everything is different now. It's all different. It's all different. 